Hyrak is a compound word that is made up of three consecutive activities running one after the other. The activities consist of hazard identification, risk assessment and risk control. Hazard identification is the recognizing of things that may cause injury or harm to a person. This video clip will provide you a brief tutorial on how to use the eHyrak. First of all, you will receive a file containing Microsoft Excel format for eHyrak with the company name that has been formatted into the tool system. Registered eHyrak shall receive the template with the company name has formatted in the system. This Hyrak tool contains two main parts, user guidelines and a matrix that has formed the first part. Meanwhile, the second part consists of the assessment section, namely job list, Hyrak format and risk register list. All these buttons will make this template easily accessible from the beginning of the assessment process until the end of risk assessment activities. Before we start the process of documenting the risk assessment, we need to re-verify the status of legal requirements that are related to the process that we will assess later. A legal matrix is used to facilitate the process of verifying legal requirements that apply to OSH. Now, we start the assessment process through job listing. Click the job list button to bring you to go to the data entry process, hazard identification, and risk assessment process. By clicking the job list button, the system will take you to the initial section, which is the job list. This is the main interface before you start the work to create a high rack. The first instruction to follow is to type the department and responsible person. After that, set the main activities covering the primary process, infrastructure, or facility that involves employees or other people. Next, list all the tasks, work, or activities related to completing the primary process or we call a process sequence. This is important so that all work done can be covered in detail before each process will be assessed for hazards and risks. Now, the job listing process and recording of the sequencing process are complete. Next, the evaluation process is ready to assess the hazards and risks for each job specifically. Leave blank space on the process sequence if the step-by-step -step work is complete. The next step is the most important process in implementing high rack documentation. It deals with job hazard identification and then is analyzing risks in the workplace. Select the activity you want to assess by selecting the input that has been entered through the first step before. Then, identify whether the task is routine or non-routine or an emergency case or unplanned event. Now, only then do you need to identify the types of hazards that exist in the selected workplace. This template provides a complete and comprehensive list of hazards via a drop-down list. You only need to select the suitability of the hazard with the selected activity. The details of each main hazard can be precisely selected from the hazard description. It also goes through the drop-down list function that has been formatted in this high rack template. For your information, each main hazard has a specific hazard description. In fact, you can even provide input manually by typing in the cell provided. Based on the type of hazard selected, the next step is how to look at the potential occupational safety and health risks to the workers or individuals involved. Selection of the potential risk through this button. As a result, the selected consequences data is automatically visible once the data entry for risk is entered. The following is a list of potential risks that you can select based on the hazards that have been identified. The risk category is based on the highest severity, such as catastrophic, physical injury, impact on health, and finally, impact on the damaged property. Click on related data to automatically reflect on the risk assessment data in the job list. Once the selection of potential risk is done, click this button to return back to the job list. Now, you can see potential risks updated automatically. Then, after identifying the hazard and its potential risks, we move on to risk analysis. It begins by stating the current risk control of the workplace. You can choose one or more risk controls that are being implemented among the options given, namely substitution, isolation, engineering control, administration control, and also personal protective equipment or known as PPE. In addition, specific controls can be addressed, explain in detail about the controls deployed by the company. Next three steps are the final ways in assessing the level of workplace risk. That are legal requirement, determine the likelihood and severity to justify the risk rating. Legal requirements are based on the list that we have updated in the legal matrix on the main menu that we entered at the beginning of this high rack documentation process. After that, the process of assessing likelihood or probability. 
It is important that you evaluate accurately based on the five scales provided. You are advised to do an analysis first before determining the likelihood rate. Lastly, determine the severity rate of unwanted incidents that could potentially occur. It also sets five scales from the least severe position up to the most major severity. After that, the risk assessment process for one of the hazards against the selected activity is now complete. Next, what you need to do is to see the outcome of the data entry that you have entered. Click the high rack tab to view the full format of the document. Look, the results of the data entry you did are now displayed automatically. You can add further data entry to other processes or the same process with other hazards and risks. Repeat the same steps as described before so that all processes and hazards can be covered completely. Review the results of the risk assessment performed and decide whether improvements need to be planned or not. If improvements are necessary, there are a number of steps that need to be taken. The initial action that needs to be done is put a priority number, which gives an indication that improvement activity has been proposed. Suggestions for improvement are then recorded in the recommended control column by including the necessary recommendations to minimize risk. What impact will you have? If you click on the risk register list tab, you will display a summary of the recommendations. And all of those suggestion lists are automatic without having to retype into a new form. Now, the high rack documentation description process is complete. Hope you find something useful related to this high rack tool. If you are interested in getting this tool, please get the information in the description field below. Thank you for watching.